Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Professor Hugh uh, Gustafson. Professor, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Now, tell us a little bit about, uh, about your research with uh, nuclear weapon scientists. Well, I've been tracking American nuclear weapon scientists since uh, the late 1980s. I moved to a small town in California, Livermore, in 1987 and uh, lived for two years around the nuclear weapons lab. I was interested in understanding why people would feel they had a vocation to work on weapons of mass destruction was surprised to find many of the weapons scientists are very liberal, politically liberal. So they're conservatives, they're liberals. Uh, they were united by their sense that nuclear weapons could never ever be used. Uh, I met weapons scientists who said they would never work on conventional weapons because that would be immoral, conventional weapons kill people. But they were happy to work on nuclear weapons because they prevent war. This is a very, uh, very odd vocation to work on a weapon that you're convinced is never going to be used. Well, but some of them said things like, I'm so proud, I saved millions of lives by preventing World War III. And now uh, the Cold War is over, so you might think that the weapons scientists have gone away, but actually the US spends more on nuclear weapons R&D now than it did during the Cold War. Um, it seems we can't quite let go of the weapons, and it's more expensive to take care of them if you can't test them by blowing them up than if you can. So we're uh, spending a lot of money on fantastic simulation technologies now to keep the weapons in working order. So, I mean, you're an anthropologist, so, so, so what effect does that have on the community of, of the nuclear weapon scientists, the fact that, as you say, the Cold War is well and truly over? In some ways, I think they're a little demoralized. Um, they don't have quite the raison d'etre for their lives that they had during the high excitement of the Cold War. Uh, on the other hand, the moral stakes aren't quite so high. And because they can't actually blow the weapons up, they have to do more work on the fundamental science and understand at a deeper level the way the weapons work. So some of the younger ones in particular say that's more exciting. Why is this a field that, that you got into? It, it, it's not the first one that would spring to mind for an anthropologist. I think many anthropologists look for a sort of personal other that compels them in some way. And I had been an anti-nuclear activist myself in the early 1980s. Uh, I lived quite close to the Lawrence Livermore Lab, the facility I wrote a book about. And I was interested in understanding why these people who I'd been in a political movement against, why they felt so deeply that what they were doing was the right thing to do. And it was actually quite a moving uh, journey for me to get to know them, to befriend them. When I got married, I got married in a nuclear weapon scientist's garden with nuclear weapon scientists and anti-nuclear activists at my wedding. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.